Will, Donington, tonight, we're racing on, is a new circuit for you. I understand that this is the first time you've got to know the circuit, and now you've even taken us on a tour. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I haven't actually driven there much, as you know, most championships these days are more overseas. So I've done a lot more at Silverstone than I have at Donington, but it's a great track. Um, I've done a few test days there, which have always been good. So looking forward to, to getting online and having a good race there. Let's go backwards in your career a little bit, because you've come through single seaters, through the Renault programme and all the way through to Formula One. You know, you're one of the few drivers that have made it all the way through. Talk me how, you know, through that process of becoming a Formula One driver. Yeah, I mean, I think it all starts off at karting. Um, again, I started just at club level in, in England and then worked my way through to racing in Europe with Tony Kart. And then uh, I actually got picked up by Honda when I was still in karting. Um, so they sort of controlled my first few years within motorsport. That's when I went to Formula One UK. Um, then obviously they pulled out of Formula One after a few years. Um, so that's when I sort of went towards Renault World Series um, and spent three years here. And that's when I moved a step across into, into Formula One at the end of 2014 with Caterham. Because I was on their young driver program the whole way through. So I was always on the path to being with them. Um, and then obviously my full season was in 2015 with, with Manor. So, as you said, you know, every, every young guy growing up wants to achieve that. So, the year I did there was amazing. I wish it could have been in something slightly more competitive. Um, but it was good. You know, I, I've loved every moment of it. It's nice to be able to say that I experienced what it's like um, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And like you say, you have now got a very, very strong career. You are well established as one of the main drivers in the endurance world now with your ELMS stuff, with the Le Mans racing. Endurance racing is, is a whole different ball game as well, isn't it? You know, it's, it's got a lot of respect. Um, to be able to race LMP1 cars and GT cars on the same circuit, those different speeds, is quite the challenge. Yeah, I mean, what's cool is I've now experienced, the, obviously, the GT side um, of GT3 and also in GTE in, in World Endurance and ELMS. Um, and then obviously more now is the prototype stuff. Um, so currently doing WEC um, with Jackie Chan, DC Racing and Jota and then ELMS um, with Panis Racing. So, you know, now I've got myself um, fully in that market. So that's what's great. And I think it's actually quite nice to have driven both cars that you're racing against in traffic and everything like that because you actually understand from both points of view how the traffic works is that's such an important part of endurance racing. That's where you can win and lose most time, actually. Um, as obviously all the top guys are within a few tenths of each other, but where you can win and lose a lot is, is within traffic. And obviously this year's thrown a little bit of a, a spanner in the works in terms of calendars. Le Mans has been moved back to September. They're yeah. saying it could be the fastest Le Mans that we've ever had. Yeah, I mean, as you said, everything's obviously been put on hold. The World Endurance Championship, we're actually basically halfway through the year. Um, so that's a little bit annoying that we got started and knew where we were at and we had a few races coming up. Um, the first race we missed was in Sebring, where we knew we were going to be very strong because we've done quite a lot there as a team. Um, and then obviously ELMS didn't even get started, so hopefully we can, we can get back to that as soon as we can. Um, but enjoying the online stuff um, at the moment. How do you see the online stuff? Do you see it very much as just a bit of fun? Do you see it as keeping yourself sharp and focused and training? Um, I think it's a bit of everything. I mean, at the start, it was all, always a lot of fun. A lot of drivers were doing it just to have a bit of a laugh. And I think now it's got a lot of traction. Everyone's starting to take it a lot more seriously, um, which is good. You know, the racing's starting to get a bit cleaner because there was always a lot of crashes towards the start. Um, but it's super competitive. I mean, the guys who are on it all the time is, is really is really quick. But that's the, it's getting to a point now where you have to drive all the time. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's lots of different things of it, but I'm enjoying it. It's good fun, and, uh, and we're improving race by race. I think we're going to see a lot more sim racing and e-racing championships staying for the long run. <laughs> yeah, I think it will. I mean, obviously, at the moment, it's, it's increasing popularity a lot but I'm actually pretty confident that it's going to keep sticking around. I think a lot of manufacturers, um, championships and all that are going to try and do a lot more with it because it builds publicity away from the actual races. So I think it's a really good thing for motorsport and um, hopefully a lot more, can bring a lot more people to the sport. You know, that's important to, to get that. 
<laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank no you for us on a tour of the circuit as well. Um, Thanks a lot. Have a fantastic race. Cheers, we'll try. <laughs>